Hey, what's up you guys? It's Matt here, back again with another video. Uh, for those of you who've been following, following the channel since I started this a year ago, you'll be familiar, familiar with uh, my uh, personal Vism collection video where I go went over you know the current pieces I had in my collection at the time. I think it was around you know 10 to 13 pieces. Um, a year later, I have a lot more and I'd like to do kind of like an updated uh, collection video for you guys and show you uh, where my collection went from a year ago to now. Uh, some of these items um, you guys have already seen in my pickup videos, so I won't go too into depth detail on those, but there will be a good amount of new items you guys haven't seen before and I can go more in depth on those items in particular. Uh, before we start the video, I'd like to ask everyone to uh, like the video if you like the video, subscribe to the channel if you um, enjoy videos like this. I do FizVim and fashion content. Uh, in addition to that, uh, if you could follow me on Instagram and on Grail, the links will be in the description below. Also, put post notifications on this YouTube channel and my Instagram so you don't miss any of the YouTube content or any of the business listings that I uh, will do in the future. I think that's about it, so let's get into the video. Okay, starting off my collection, we're gonna start off with t-shirts, button-ups, uh, sweatshirts, and hoodies. So for the first tee, we have the Visvin Vintage Stencil Tee. This one is a size four and from the Fall Winter 2017 collection. So pretty much just a basic white t-shirt with a stencil printed graphic. So as you can see, the graphic says Visvim and WMV exhibition of newly designed collections and the stencil is applied unevenly because they applied it by hand using a hand stencil. Um, so it's not exactly perfect everywhere throughout, which is a really cool detail. But yeah, just a regular uh, white t-shirt with a cool graphic detail on the front. Moving on, we have the Visvim uh, Jumbo Subsequence Tee. This one is a size three and from the Spring Summer 2019 collection. Uh, subsequ Subsequence is a magazine that Visvim often collaborates with. So they made this t-shirt in collab collaboration with the company and just has their Subsequence logo screen printed on the front. Uh, so this is pretty much just a basic white t-shirt with a screen printed graphic. Um, but yeah, super simple and super versatile. Moving on, we have a number, uh, another jumbo pocket tee. Uh, this one is in a heather gray. Uh, this one is a size four and from the uh, spring summer 2018 collection. Uh, so this one is actually their stencil jumbo tee. So that means that they actually stencil the number of production it was. So this one was number 216 in production. And other than that, it features one chest pocket and then this really nice soft um, cotton in this heather gray color. Moving on, we have Visvim's uh, Clubhouse 3 fourths tee. And this is actually in a vegetable dyed green colorway. So the Clubhouse tee has raglan sleeves with uh, the three-fourth cut length. And uh, it's a pretty trim cut, so I recommend that you guys uh, size up one size. Or you can stay true to size and it'll be a little bit tighter fitting, however you like your shirts to fit. And the color on this is absolutely insane. It's a you know vegetable dyed green colorway and they made it using a vegetable matter, so it's kind of earthy tones and just a really simple cool shirt. Moving on we have Visvim's uh, Clubhouse 3 fourths tee. Uh, this one is in a size 3 and from the spring summer 2018 collection. Uh, so the Clubhouse tee has uh, raglan sleeves with 3 fourth cut length and pretty much uh, a regular cut throughout the body. Uh, what makes this tee special is this one is actually vegetable dyed in this really nice green colorway. So they do this by extracting uh, vegetable matter um, using a boiling method. And then they dye the tea and it leaves it with a very natural, uh, you know, earthy tone color. And it's just super, super amazing. 
um, this dyeing process. But other than that, it's just a you know soft cotton baseball type t-shirt and really versatile. Moving on, we have this Zim's wide tee, and this is in an uneven dye. So what the uneven dye is, is they put the garment inside a machine with rotating cylinders and then add the dye to it. And when the uh, garment is mixing with the dye and the rotating cylinders, it applies the dye unevenly all the way throughout. In addition to this, after the garment is dyed, they do kind of hand distressing on the neck and on the sleeve hem and on the actual hem itself. Uh, so this one is a size two and from the spring summer 2021 collection and it's in this incredible purple colorway, super versatile and I mainly wear this as an undershirt because the wide cut is rather um, trim, but nonetheless a very very nice tee. Next up we have an, another uneven dyed t-shirt but this is in their jumbo cut. So obviously jumbo is by the name it's oversized, has one chest pocket, um, but this is in an ivory uneven dye. Um, same detailing on the um, on the collar and on the hems with the distressing, and uh, just an incredible color that they get on this. This one is from the spring summer 2019 collection, and it's a size two. Moving on, we have another jumbo uneven die. As you guys can see, I really like the jumbo cut and I really like the uneven dies that they do. Uh, so this one is in a nice green colorway. And so this one is a size three and from the spring summer 2019 collection. But yeah, an awesome, awesome color. Moving on, once again, we have the jumbo uneven die tees. This one is in a size five, so it's extremely oversized on me. I'm planning to take it to a tailor and getting it cropped, and hopefully it'll look more like, like the Ampless cuts that they've come out with in the past couple of, of years. Um, but yeah, this is from the Fall Winter 2018 collection, and it has an incredible blue colorway all the way throughout. Finishing off the yeah, even jumbo uh, tees, we have um, the same thing, just in red. And this is a beautiful uh, faded red with color variation throughout. And it's just, I love these tees and, and this uneven dye that they do. It's just so incredible. Um, it reminds me a lot like a faded vintage tee. And I really enjoy that look a lot. And this one is also a size three and from the Fall Winter 2020 collection. Uh, moving on, we have another jumbo tee, but this is from their Indigo Camping Trailer Collection. So it's kind of like their artisanal label. So this one uses artificial indigo, and it's actually over dyed. So when I first got this, it was extremely, extremely dark indigo. And through, you know, repeated wear and washing, the indigo has slowly bled off. And now it left it with, you know, a slightly paler blue as it was before. But uh, same details as you saw in the other jumbo cuts. You have an oversized silhouette, one chest pocket. The only difference is it has a Kofu patch on the neck there. Uh, this one is a size three and from the spring summer 2018 collection. So as opposed to the last tee, this, this uses natural indigo dye instead of the artificial used on the previous tee. Um, but this is a, a jumbo tee, natural indigo dyed, size three and from the spring summer 2020 collection. So the only difference between artificial and natural dye is artificial uses chemicals to make the indigo color and the natural actually extracts the indigo out of Japanese indigo plants. And uh, that process is extremely painstaking and it's a very long and expensive process, but it leaves a beautiful, natural, deep indigo color um, when it's dyed. And it also has an uneven effect as well because the dye can't uh, uniformly have the same color everywhere throughout. But yeah, really nice tea. So moving on, these will all be the ultimate style teas. So what the ultimate means is it uses uh, Sea Island cotton from the British West Indies, which is known as 
the world's most expensive, luxurious, softest cotton. And so that's why Hiroki calls these like the ultimate teas because you literally can't get better cotton that fits on these teas. Um, so the other thing that's gonna differ is color and cut. So this one use is the crew t-shirt. So this is kind of like a regular or trim cut. So this one is a size four and from the fall winter 2018 collection. I actually have two of them. Um, this one being from the spring summer 2019 collection. Can't get enough of these. They're perfect undershirts and they're extremely, extremely soft. So this is the ultimate jumbo tee. So this is pretty much the same fabric, just in the jumbo silhouette with the chest pocket. And that one's in white, uh, size three from the fall winter 2019 collection. And then I have the same exact thing, just in black, size three again, and from the spring summer 2021 collection. Okay, so moving on to short sleeve button ups. So this is the Visvim Ketchum shirt and it is size three. And from the spring summer 2020 collection. And as the name suggests, this is inspired after, you know, classic hunting and fisherman shirts. So we have two uh, front waist pockets and a bunch of utility chest pockets um, where you can put any sort of bait or pens or any, any sort of things that you need while out hunting. Um, we have an open collar design, um, some really cool darting effect on the front, on the front uh, waist pockets, uh, vegetable ivory nut buttons, and then we have nice darting down the center there, and then Visvim signature stitching on the collar. So this uses a cotton linen blend fabric, so it's extremely textured, slubby, and um, it's a really nice uh, breathable weight. Uh, it also has darting on the shoulders as well. Really cool details all the way throughout. Um, we have a really cool pocket right there. But the more you look at this tee, the more that uh, the more details that you find with it. But yeah, I really like the fabric on this because this is kind of like a hunting shirt. You kind of expect a lightweight, breathable fabric and the cotton linen is super nice and lightweight and has a really cool character all the way throughout. Next up, we have the Irving shirt. This one is a size four and from the spring summer 2020 collection. So this uses a Raimi and uh, linen fabric. It is extremely textured and slubby and uh, really, really breathable. Uh, the Irving shirts typically have two chest pockets, a, um, a front button placket, an open collar design, and then cuffed sleeves. Uh, this one features bamboo buttons, a nice V stitching on the chest there, and then the uh, signature stitching on the collar. But yeah, super versatile tee and really cool details all the way throughout. Next up, we have another Irving shirt. This is from their Indigo Camping trailer uh, sub-label. Uh, this one is a size five and from the spring summer 2019, 2019 collection. So pretty much the same cut as the previous shirt, but this uses obviously Vincent's custom white bandana fabric. So this bandana fabric is actually made out of four different uh, bandanas that Vizum has made. And then they cut it up and kind of do a patchwork stitching design. And then they also have Vizum branding there as well. Super cool button up and you can really stare at it for days and see, you know, different details all the way throughout. And then it also has the typical ICT Kofu patch on the neck there. But yeah, super awesome uh, button up and I can't wait to wear it for years to come. Moving on, we have the Visvim Free Edge shirt. This is also from Visvim's Indigo Camping Trailer sub-label. So the Free Edge shirt has kind of like an oversized fit, a hidden front button pla uh, placket, and, and then an open collar, and then one chest pocket. Uh, this being from the ICT label, it specializes in the same indigo overdye that we saw on this tee. So they take artificial um, indigo and kind of has this really, really deep, rich, dark blue color. Um, 
I've watched this and worn this uh, plenty of times and it actually fades each time and it's getting slowly, uh, you know, less dark blue, which I'm really enjoying. Uh, details here, we have ICT stitching on the chest pocket there and then Kofu uh, patch on the neck. And this uses a really nice mid-weight rayon fabric. Um, usually I expect for him to be like fairly light and flowy and this is flowy, but it's a really cool mid-weight fabric and it's something um, that I'm not very used to. It also is um, like a double ply, so it's not just, um, it's not just one. It's not something that I'm used to, but I'm really enjoying it. Uh, also, this is a size three and from the Spring Summer 2020 collection. Next up, we have Vism's um, Ellery Havely shirt. And this is a size two and from the Spring Summer 2019 collection. So the Ellery shirt is typically known for a boxy and cropped silhouette, two waist pockets and one chest pocket, and then an open collar design. This one features really nice bamboo buttons throughout. And what speaks to this most is the way that it was created, the color. So as you can see, these are individual hand stamps. And so it says VSVM, WNV all the way throughout. So um, to make this fabric, a Kyoto Cat craftsman actually stamped each circle that you see, which as you can imagine, would take an extreme amount of time to produce. And uh, it's just such a cool graphic and cool story behind how they made the piece. Moving on, we have Vistin's Wallace shirt. This one is a size one and from the Fall Winter 2021 collection. So the Wallace is typically known for an extremely wide and oversized silhouette with a cropped length. Um, and then also has an open collar and then a chest pocket. This one uses really nice um, original buffalo horn buttons and then is made out of this really nice lightweight flowy rayon fabric. And then as you can see, it has the V graphic print all the way throughout. It kind of looks like Christmas lights, uh, but nonetheless, a very cool graphic button up shirt. And then also features cool Kofu brand, um, a Kofu patch on the hem there. Moving on, we have another Wallace shirt. So this is the Wallace Patchwork Bandana Natural Dye. This one is a size three and from the Spring Summer 2021 collection. So as the other bandana piece that we saw previously, this is made using a Katy fabric and then they do a bandana print. And this is also patchworked. So as you can see, there's stitching that patchworks all of the bandanas together on the sleeves as well. It's just a really cool design. Um, we have the same uh, water buffalo horn buttons as we saw previously open collar design and this really cool bandana print all the way throughout and then this is actually natural dyed in this nice green colorway it reminds me reminds me of the clubhouse tee and i just can't get enough of this shirt the color the fabric it's just an amazing shirt and really really nice for the summer Okay, so moving on to long sleeve button ups. First up, we have this one's Wally uh, check shirt. So this one is a size three and from the spring summer 2016 collection. So the Wally shirt is typically known for its wide and cropped nature, uh, two uh, button chest pockets, and then a button front placket. Uh, the buttons they use are uh, natural vegetable ivory nail buttons and then the fabric is a very very nice double ply uh, mid-weight cotton and it's almost like the perfect cotton for uh, a flannel and i i tend to think that the wally shirts are the perfect flannel and the best flannel that you can find on the market um, as you can see this is the inside of the fabric and then you can see what's printed on the outside just a really unique color fit 
and uh, material on this and also features this cool woven design with Vism detailing. Um, but yeah, I really, really enjoyed the shirt when I washed it the other day. It, the water was actually pink, which is cool to see that the red is actually fading as you wash it. Um, but yeah, hopefully this gets to even like a duller color and looks like a vintage flannel that you can find at a thrift store. Moving on, we have Visvim's lumber shirt, and this is their uh, lumber patchwork bandana and natural dye. Um, so this is pretty much the same kind of fabric that we saw on the Wallace shirt previously. Uh, this one is a size two and from the Fall Winter 2020 collection. So this is again, a Katie uh, bandana printed fabric. And the print on this is a little different than the Wallace. You can see it has more traditional bandana symbols all the way throughout. Uh, we have really nice cowbone buttons, one chest pocket, and uh, the lumber is typically fit, oversized, boxy, and cropped. So I re recommend either staying true to size for the intended oversized fit, or size down like I did for you know a more regular cut. But yeah, the color on this is absolutely like amazing. It's this deep, deep plum purple color, and uh, I've never owned something that was this shade of purple. So I'm really excited to add it to my wardrobe. Um, but yeah, and it also has that same Kofi patch on the hem as we saw previously, but a really, really awesome shirt. Uh, moving on, we actually have another lumber, lumber shirt. So this is in a houndstooth check printed KD fabric. Um, and I've shown this off before, but this one features oversized front chest pockets vestibule ivory nut buttons throughout and then this really cool uh you know damaged fabric i don't know if you guys can see but there's little distressing all the way throughout the fabric and little um specks that have fallen off and Vism did a really cool processing job on these um after they after they created the fabric they put it through a certain wash um, and damage process that made it look super worn in and you can see a little speck right there has fallen off and i really want to wear these to the point where they look like the damaged version so if you guys have seen the damaged version of, of this exact shirt it's a lot more faded and a lot more um like a paler green which i think is really cool and i'd like to see how long it'll take me to get to that damaged kind of look um but yeah the inside itself is is white and then the outside is like the printed fab uh check pattern that they did super breathable super comfortable and then um obviously very wearable moving on we have this 1910 shirt so this is you know just a typical oversized button-up shirt two front uh, chest pockets these are vegetable ivory nut buttons uh, this actually uses egyptian giza cotton uh which is known as one of the world's most luxurious and expensive cottons, uh, second to, you know, um, West Indian Sea Island cotton, but it's super lightweight, super breathable, and it's almost cold to the touch, uh, which is really nice to see. Uh, the 1910 is kind of like, as I said, oversized and boxy. This one is a size four, but fits more like a size three, which is nice. Uh, and then this is also from the spring summer 2018 collection. But yeah, just a super wearable button up shirt and you can dress it up and dress it down. And then also has Vism, uh, Vism's collar stitch detail on the back there. Moving on, we have one of my favorite purchases in a while. This is the Vism Conoid, uh, ja uh, this is Vism's Conoid shirt. This one is a size two and from the fall winter 2020 collection so obviously it has an oversized fit it being a size two it fits me well um i usually take a size three in this one but um with these newer seasons as they're going um bigger in sizing i tend to size down on the newer stuff um but yeah so it's got an oversized kind of cropped silhouette two front pockets and then a really nice open collar and then it uses uh, original buffalo horn buttons. 
Uh, as you can see, the color, it's incredible. This is a, they say that this is black, but it came out kind of like a um, dark, dark brown. So this is garnet dyed. So you can see, you know, a bunch of fading and color uh, variation and unevenness throughout. And they also do kind of uh, light, light distressing on the collar there and on the hem as well. And then it also has the same Kofu uh, patch at the hem there. And the thing that makes the shirt really interesting is this back collar detail called Nakiri. And what that does is actually pinches the fabric at the shoulders there and has the, the fabric billow out kind of at the shoulders. And you see this detail a lot in Vizvan's Sanjuro and Naragi silhouettes. As you can see, the arms are almost like the arms that you would see in like the Sanjuro kimonos that they do. Um, but they did it in a shirt. I'm pretty sure this is the first time that they ever done it. And I really, really like the paneling on it and how it fits on body. And yeah, so this is a really, really interesting shirt. Uh, I think this is very slept on. I don't see a lot of people, um, you know, wearing this or talking about this, but I really suggest you guys check this one out. The Vizum Canoid Jack, uh, the, the Vizum Canoid shirt. Moving on, we have uh, Vizum's very famous Solstice Sculpture shirt. So as the name suggests, this uses their custom eight ounce Solstice Sculpture denim. Um, and this is actually a selvage denim made from Okayama, Japan and pretty much has a Western style detailing throughout to uh, snap button front chest pockets and then mother of pearl snap button placket um, front closure. Um, as you can see, it has the selvage piping along, along the placket there. Uh, this one is a size large and they do fit true to size. The tag is very old and worn out, so I can't exactly date it, but I know that it is pre-2012 and the denim has faded um, beautifully and it's very, very soft to the touch and it actually started to rip in places like back here. But I think I'm going to embrace the holes and the damage that comes with wear because I think it will just add to the character of the shirt. Moving on, we have Vizum's Grand River uh, chambray shirt. So the Grand River is very known for being extremely oversized, foxy, and cropped. Uh, this one is a size one, but it fits more like a size three. And it's from the Fall and Winter 2020 collection. Uh, and also it features this A-line silhouette at the, at the chest there. So what A-line means is it is tighter on the chest and then billows out and gets wider as you get towards the hem. And it's a really cool um, silhouette when it's on body. It has two oversized chest pockets, original cowbone buttons, and this really, really nice uh, tan grease and super long staple uh, cotton blend fabric. And it has really nice texture and it's super lightweight and breathable. Moving on, we have one of my favorite um, silhouettes that Vism has done. This is the Vism Alpha PO shirt. So the PO stands for pullover. So as you can see, this isn't a fully uh, you know, button down shirt. It has kind of like a uh, quarter button, button front placket. Uh, these buttons are made from bamboo and they're hand painted and hand detailed uh, with peerless detailing. It's got two front chest pockets and um, this really cool wide and oversized silhouette. You can see the front is shorter than the back there and the back kind of has like this swoop detail. Um, as you guys can see the, the fabric is super, I would say it's heavyweight and it's almost like a cotton canvas fabric. Um, I would consider this more like a shirt jacket than a shirt. Uh, really cool darting on the middle there and uh, the, the coloring itself is incredible. So this one was garment dyed and damaged process. So it has really, really natural fading and uh, color variation all the way throughout. And uh, I really, really like this shirt and I'm looking for the 
they did a uh, dry denim version of this shirt and I'm looking for it. If any of you guys um, have one and want, and want to sell it for a decent price, I would be very interested. And then um, about sizing, this one is a size four and from the fall winter 2018 collection. Uh, it being a size four, it's a little bit oversized on me. I recommend that you guys stay true to size um, when purchasing this silhouette. So moving on, we have the same cut. This is again an alpha PO shirt, but this has just a different color and fabric. Uh, this one is a size three. And from the spring summer 2018 collection, uh, so pretty much the same silhouette, styling, and cut. This features really nice bamboo buttons. And what stands out to me is the fabric that they made on these. So it's a linen, wool, and cotton blend fabric. And it has really nice character and texture all the way throughout. Um, it almost feels like a tweed fabric. Um, it is a little bit itchy, but if you wear it as a shirt jacket, um, with a shirt underneath, it's a lot um, more bearable. And uh, I really, really enjoy the cut and the color and especially the fabric of this one. Um, and I really am looking to get a lot more alpha POs in my wardrobe. So finishing off the button up shirts, uh, we have the ICT Kurtz shirt. So this one is uh, a size four and from the uh, fall winter 2012 collection um, it being from the indigo camping trailer collection it has the typical kofu at the neck there and then has this really cool um, check fabric all the way throughout uh, the kurt shirt is is kind of like a wide and cropped shirt and then has these uh, two oversized chest pockets and then these really cool uh, kind of like tarnished wooden buttons throughout. And then it also has the stitching detail. This one, this side says free, and this one has a bunch of plus signs. And then this fabric is actually a cotton rayon and silk blend fabric. As you can see, it's almost distressed and has a really, really nice texture all the way throughout. Um, as a, like for details on the shirt, that's just been crazy, crazy. You know, the check fabric, the color, the uh, wooden buttons, the stitching, uh, I, it's just crazy that, you know, back then, and this was in 2012, this was pretty much the, one of their first ICT pieces. And the fact that they can have this many details, is just beyond me. Um, and then finishing off, we have kind of just a regular sleeve and then it has darting there on the sleeve to pretty much get tighter as it gets towards your wrist. But yeah, a really unique uh, shirt. Okay, so moving on, we have the uh, sweatshirts and hoodies. So the first sweatshirt we're gonna be looking at is this jumbo sweatshirt. And this is actually made using mud dye. Um, I've shown this off in previous videos, but if you guys aren't familiar with mud dyeing, they boil down the Japanese hawthorn plant for a week and then um, mix it with an alkaline and that creates a mixture that you're able to dye clothing with. So after it's dyed in that alkaline mixture, they put it in a, uh, a vat of mud and this mud is very, very old and can only be found on the Amami Island in Japan. And uh, it leaves it with this very, very deep natural brown color. Um, to get this dark colorway, they have to dye it at least a hundred times. And it's extremely painstaking, painful, expensive, long process, but it really leaves an incredible, incredible color um, throughout. So this one is a size three and from the spring summer 2020 collection, and I really can't wait to wear this in to where to get a, you know, like a light mud colorway and to see it really age, you know, with me. Moving on, we have another uh, jumbo sweatshirt. This one is in a blue vegetable dye. So this is pretty much the same process as you saw on this clubhouse tee. I believe it's probably the, a very similar vegetable that they use um, for the color, but yeah. Uh, 
obviously the jumbo cut oversized and has like the cool sweatshirt v stitch detailing uh, so this one's a size three as well and from the spring summer 2020 collection but yeah just a really versatile sweatshirt and a really cool dyeing process okay moving on we have another jumbo sweatshirt but this uses the uh, uneven dye as we talked about previously um, this is actually the same dye as this wide tee as you can see uh, this is from the same season uh, so yeah this has a really nice uneven purple colorway throughout and this uses a really nice lightweight roofy cotton it's kind of like a very very loose gauge french terry like loop back jersey cotton material um all i know that it's not too hot but not too um cold and it'll keep you warm in general um but i just really like how flowy the cotton is um, i really don't like super super heavy cotton uh, sweatshirts and hoodies because i live in florida so you know i can wear this year round and be just fine um, and I think that the color that they got, they were able to get on this is, is um, very, very impressive. Uh, moving on, once again, we have the jumbo sweatshirt and another uneven dye, this one in a green color. And as you can see the dye that it was, um, it also used purple in the dye as well. So this one especially looks very tie dye y and it used a really nice brushed cotton fleece, um, but yeah. I think the color variation that they got on the, um, on this sweatshirt is very, very cool. And I haven't really seen um, a dye like this since. Um, I believe they went from this tie dye effect to more um, uniform but uneven uh, colors. But yeah, nonetheless, really cool. This one is also a size three and from the fall winter 2019 collection. Okay, moving on to hoodies. We have the Ultimate JV Crew hoodie. Uh, so judging from the name Alt Ultimate, it uses the Sea Island cotton that we talked about previously. This one in a really nice ivory colorway. Uh, the JV uh, hoodies have the raglan sleeves, a regular cut, and then ribbing down the sides. Uh, this is one of my favorite hoodies just because it's so wearable with the color and then its softness is unmatched. Uh, this one is a size four and from the fall winter 2021 collection. Uh, I recommend you guys really check out the, the any of the ultimate cuts, whether it be the hoodie or the t-shirts. Um, I really, really recommend them. Next up, we have another jumbo um, hoodie. This one using natural indigo dye. So pretty much the same dye that you see here. Uh, this one is a little bit more faded and this one is brand new. Uh, but yeah, so the same process as I talked about with that t-shirt, but you just do it with a hoodie. Um, really, really nice color variation and fading. Um, and apparently with indigo dye, it makes the cotton um, a lot more structured and uh, antibacterial which is really nice and you can really tell that um, the cotton is super super you know thick and structured cotton but also not too hot uh, this one is a size three and it's from the fall winter 18 collection moving on we have one of my favorite hoodies that i've ever had from Visman. this is the jumbo hoodie so this is in a mud dye um, the mud has faded like to its maximum where it's just this really, really nice light brown color. As you compare it to the dark mud that I showed previously, you can see the color uh, fading is very, very prominent. Um, but yeah, whoever had this before me really wore this to the ground and it was extremely, extremely soft. Uh, this one is a size three and from Fall Winter 2017 collection. So yeah, just an awesome hoodie with an incredible dye. Moving on, we have uh, once again, another jumbo hoodie. This uses uh, the uneven dye that we saw previously. I believe this is from the same season as this tee. So it's pretty much the tee version and then the hoodie version. Uh, 
As you can see, it's got a really nice tie-dye effect, blue all the way throughout, um, and then the nice distressing that you see on all the uneven uh, dye products. This one especially is extremely, extremely soft with the brushed cotton uh, that it uses. And then finishing off the hoodies, we have one of Vizvim's newer cuts. This is called the Amplis Cut. And so the Amplis is known for being extremely oversized, boxy, and cropped. Uh, so as you can see, it's super, super wide and then falls right at your waist. This also uses red uneven dye. So once again, I, it seems like I like to match my tees with my hoodies because this is the jumbo uneven dye and then this is the hoodie. Uh, this one looks more like a pastel red and is going more towards the pink and uh, I really like how it's faded over time. You can see that the uh, kangaroo pocket is a lot more faded than the actual body. Um, this one is a size 3 and from the Fall Winter 2020 collection and this also uses that roofy cotton that I was talking about previously. And yeah, that is it for, you know, kind of like the top section. So I guess we'll move on to bottoms next. Okay, so moving on to bottoms for my collection. Uh, starting it off, we have these really nice pastoral shorts. Uh, I believe these are from the, the Fall Winter 2014 collection, and they are a size one, which fits true to size to like a 30 or 31 waist. Uh, it uses a really nice cotton linen blend herringbone fabric and uh, the fading in garment dye is incredible. As you can see along all the seams you have, you have this really nice loss of color, um, kind of like on the seams. You got really nice darting here back into the back pockets, vegetable ivory nut button uh, closure. Um, we have a metal closure on the front there and then a button fly as well. Just simple shorts, perfect for the summer. Um, and just really nice details and kind of has like a, a worn and faded effect. And then it actually has this really cool cherry print on the uh, pocket linings as well. But yeah, just super simple short. Next up we have Vizim's sweatpants. Uh, so these are from, well these are extremely old. So pre-2012 and they're size two, uh, the sweatpants, um, are known for fitting abnormally large for their size. So even a size one will have like a, you know, 35 inch waist, but all of them come with these drawstrings. So you pretty much have to use them to make them fit your waist. Uh, so this be these being size two, as you can see, the waist is extremely, extremely uh, big, but with a drawstring, they can fit. Uh, so these are actually made out of Egyptian Giza cotton. Um, so they're extremely, extremely soft, and these are also finished in a mud dye, and it's just an incredible color, um, and it has really nice fading over the years. So I believe these are, you know, over 10 years old, so they feel extremely soft to the touch, and they're actually in very good condition considering their age. Uh, the sweatpants also have drawstrings on the hem as well so you can fit the silhouette around your ankle and yeah just a comfortable sweatpant um and with the color earth tones i think it goes well with pretty much anything in my wardrobe next up we have these high water drill mill pants uh, these are a size four and they are from the spring summer 2020 collection uh, so these being size four they do fit uh, pretty tight this silhouette so I recommend sizing up at least one size from your normal size so size 4 fits like a 32 inch waist um, I do have another pair that I'll show after this that are size 3 and and they fit more like a 31 waist so you can you can stay um, true to size or size up depending on how you want it to fit around your waist um, but anyways the Dromo pants they have a um, a mid-rise, a zipper fly, really nice vegetable ivory nut button, and as you can see it has a cropped length and then a raw split hem, which is a really cool detail. It has these really nice military front pockets, and then has um, 
fold over button flap pockets with waist adjusters as well, which is a good touch. And then you see it has these dartings throughout. Um, just really cool details on this and the color itself. Um, I believe these were garment dyed. Uh, left really nice fading throughout. And the fabric itself is made from this Tanguise cotton and it is extremely soft, stretchy, pliable. Um, these almost feel like sweatpants when you're wearing them. Um, so yeah, really cool pant. So as I just said, uh, this is the same pant, just in the ivory color. Uh, these are a size three, so they fit a little bit more trim, but pretty much the same details, just a different colorway. And uh, I like this pant so much that I had to get another color. Um, and obviously this color goes with everything as well. Next up, we have the pastoral braces pants. So these are from the Spring Summer 2015 collection, and they are size one. Uh, they fit true to size to a 31 waist, and they also feature these suspenders. And as you can see, it has the buttons um, to accommodate it. We have these really nice back pockets. So the details on, on these uh, is going to be really similar to the shorts I showed before, um, except these this pant version actually has this back cinch, which is a nice touch. Um, we have vegetable ivory nut button fly with the same metal enclosure that was on the shorts. And what I really like about these is the fabric um, and then the wash as well. So the fabric is like a sturdy cotton canvas uh, material and then the wash itself is this really really pale green wash and it has really nice uh, fading color variations and uh, I hope to see these fade even more as I wear them in and yeah just a really cool pant um, and I also do like the look of uh, leaving the suspenders hanging down uh, you know, kind of gives it kind of like a, a casual vibe rather than the formal vibe that you would get from the actual suspenders. So yeah, cool pant. Next up, we have these high water uh, chino pants from Visvim. Uh, these are size two and from the fall and winter 2021 collection. Uh, these fit true to size to a 31 waist. They have a high rise, kind of like a, um, a straight, uh, cut through the leg and uh, they are pretty wide at the bottom here it has this really nice pleat all the way that all the way down and uh, as you can see the color is a really nice faded navy and they actually do a peerless uh, stencil on the leg there and then add a bunch of paint splatter damage marks and uh, it's a button fly and it actually features these incredible peerless branded antique buttons. Uh, these buttons are like my favorite thing I've ever seen. Um, I've seen in a Visvim piece in a while. Um, but yeah, so we have darting on the back pockets and uh, some more paint splatter and damage processing. Um, just a really nice wide straight chino pant that will go with anything in the wardrobe. Moving on to denim, we have their famous social sculpture denim. This is in the 01 Slim non-wash version. So if you guys don't know, the non-wash are raw denim that have been uh, chemically damaged to make it uh, look like the, the denim has been worn uh, for a year and a half. And um, really cool detailing on this, we have paint splatter on the back hem here, and then all this chemical processing that's really realistic to how uh, you know an actual raw denim pair would wear in after a year and a half. It's got a button fly, uh, mid to high rise, uh, slim straight through the leg. Uh, so these are tagged 32, 32, and I would say for Owen Slims, Stay true to size. Uh, they fit. They fit pretty true to the actual tag size, 
These are from the Fall Winter 2018 collection. And um, yeah, it's got the typical details that you see on Social Sculpture Denim. So we have the indigo dyed, uh, brain tanned, uh, deer skin back patch. We have the hidden zipper pocket in the back there. And then selvage piping pretty much all the way throughout the denim, which is a really cool touch. So yeah, so that is the 01 Slim non-wash denim. Moving on, we have these um, Social Sculpture 03 Damage 10 version. Uh, so these are from the Fall Winter 2018 collection as well. And they are tagged a 34 by 32. Um, I would say for the 03, size up one size. So if your true to size is a 32, go up to a 34 and they'll fit you very well. Uh, they have a mid-rise, a zipper fly, uh, they do not have a selvage out seam at the bottom there, uh, but yeah, the Damage 10 is a wash that I've been looking for for a very, very long time. Uh, the typical things that you see is this, you know, repaired patched hole on one knee, and then you have some little distressing on the hips as well. Uh, this one actually uses a really nice black bandana fabric as the uh, as the fabric they use to repair the hole. Uh, you can't really see it that much, but if you flip them inside out, so this is the fabric that they use. So really cool. Once that hole starts to wear away, you'll see more and more of this fabric, and I really can't wait till that happens. Same kind of details we saw in the last pair. You got that suede indigo suede back patch, uh, selvage piping along along the uh, waist there. And yeah, just uh, super cool washed jeans that pretty much will go with anything in your wardrobe. Moving on, we have one of this one's most iconic washes. So this is the Social Sculpture 01 in the Damage 14 wash. Uh, these are from the Spring Summer 2018 collection and tagged a 3230. Uh, again, with the 01, stay true to size. Um, but for the old one, we have a high rise button fly and then a straight leg throughout, um, a straight and then a straight leg. Uh, these pretty much take inspiration from classic Levi's 501 jeans. So they pretty much have the same silhouette as that. Um, but for the damage 14 wash, we have the typical patch on the right thigh and then some other cool um, patched holes and then on the, uh, on the other knee as well. And then we have distressing on the pockets here and on the back as well. Just a really cool uh, wash. I really like the, you know, damaged and repaired nature that these kind of present. Next up, we have my first pair of dry denim jeans. These are the dry denim 10. And they are from the spring summer 2020 collection and they're tagged size two. Uh, I would say size two fits around a 31 waist if you guys are interested. Uh, but the dry denim is a really cool process where they um, extract all the oil out of the denim and it leaves it with a dry textured, kind of like vintage feel um, throughout. And then they do hand distressing according to what dry you have. So the dry denim 10 um, typically has a lot of washing on the thighs. And then they, it also features paint splatter on uh, the front and the back as well. And then all dry denim features this, these really cool hand painted rivets and buttons. And they actually do every single button down the button fly. Just really cool details um, that you can see. And it also has the same elk patch that we saw in the previous denim but this actually has the ict and stitching throughout and i'm pretty sure that has to do with the shrinking process because with the uh the zipper being attached before they shrink down before they did the dry processing uh, the fabric would almost shrink around the zipper and make it look super sloppy so they went away with the zippers on both of the denim and also as we'll see on a jacket later but yeah really cool pair of pants uh they fit close to 03s or like an 01 slim maybe like right in between the two 
Um, but yeah, just a really, really cool pair of pants. Next up, we have the Visvim 03 um, Overdye from the ICT collection. Um, these are from the Spring Summer 2020 collection and they're tag size four. Uh, I did have to get these uh, taken in at the waist because they were big at, at a size four. Size four uh, was almost like a 35 inch waist. Um, but yeah, nonetheless, it has a really cool overdyed charcoal gray color and a really nice 13 ounce uh, Luxic cotton blend fabric. So these being 03, they have the same uh, cut as the denim that we showed before. So we have a zipper fly, kind of like a uh, slim cut throughout the leg. And then we have really cool detailing on the back here. We have ICT embroidery and then the ICT back patch with the end stitching as we saw in the dry denim previously. Um, but yeah, just a really awesome color. And with the charcoal over dye nature of these, these will fade very, very nicely with wear. Uh, another cool detail is this fabric patch on the inside there. Um, and then it has the number four stamped on it as well. But yeah, ICT really specializes in that dyeing process. And um, when it comes to details from that line, um, they're absolutely incredible. Moving on to corduroys. Here we have the 01 Slim uh, Natural Dye Corduroys. Uh, these are from the Spring Summer 2014 collection and are tag size one, and they fit like a 31 waist. It actually uses Vism's custom spun uh, cotton polyester blend corduroy fabric, and then they do an indigo dye on it, and then they stained it with mud, so it leaves kind of like this blue and brown uh, tie-dye color variation all the way throughout. We have a button fly and again we have the indigo uh, dyed suede back patch. Um, what drew me to these is the color and the fading that has been gone um, that they have been through throughout the years of wear and the natural dye nature is just such an awesome process and uh, I really, really like these corduroys. Moving on, we have another pair of corduroys. This is in the 01 cut, and these are, as you can tell, mud dyed, um, natural mud dyed. So it being 01, it has button fly, and then kind of like high rise, and then straight throughout the leg. These are from fall winter 2014 collection in tag size three. And then I did have to take the waist in on these as well because the size three on the old ones was more like a 35 waist. Uh, but nonetheless, we have kind of like the same details that we saw in the previous pair, but we have a mud dyed um, buckskin suede patch instead of indigo. But yeah, just an awesome pair. These will fade very nicely with wear throughout the years. And I'm really happy to add these to my collection. Finishing up the corduroys, we have the uh, Fluxus 10 Cords Crash. So this is pretty much a black pair of corduroys with a uh, low rise and then a slim cut throughout the leg and then a cropped length. And then it features this amazing uh, um, damaged and repaired nature throughout the knees and the fading on that they achieved through this is absolutely incredible. And these, these pants are probably one of the most wearable, wearable pants that I have in my wardrobe. And they pretty much go with anything. The color fading uh, and, and repairs, uh, just absolutely incredible. And I smile every single time that I look at these. And then, you know, it also features a really nice buckskin suede back patch, but this is actually left uh, natural. It's not dyed in anything. Uh, the Fluxus 10 also have the um, button fly as well. And these are tag size three, so I recommend to size up for these. Um, and then they're from the fall winter 2020 collection. But yeah, an awesome pair of quarters. Moving on, we have these uh, spring summer 2017 comma pants uh, pinstripe. 
So if you guys don't know, the Hakama pant takes inspiration from classic uh, Japanese formal attire. So we have pretty much a wide oversized dress pant with pleats and then also features this integrated belt system. And then it has these really cool vegetable ivory nut buttons and then a button fly as well. So these feature a high rise and as I said, it's pretty wide and straight throughout the leg. Uh, this uses a wool linen mohair blend pinstripe fabric. And the texture that these have are absolutely incredible. Um, they're almost like slubby to the touch. And uh, the color that they were able to achieve with this pinstripe is really, really cool. Um, but yeah, just an oversized pair of navy dress pants just a really nice thing to have in your wardrobe. Next up, we have the battalion pants in navy. Uh, so these are from the fall winter 2016 collection and they're tagged size two and they fit close to a size 33 waist. Uh, so the battalion pants have a high rise and are kind of like a straight fit throughout the leg. Uh, really nice wooden buttons that can accommodate suspenders. And then we have a cinch back at the back here. Two very, very large military style pockets. Uh, two slant pockets here. And what really stands out is the, is the fabric. So these are made out of a silk, nylon, linen, cotton, and Angora blend fabric. And it leaves this with a a very thick kind of tweed wool feeling fabric and it's got incredible un un unevenness uh, to the touch texture wise and color wise these are absolutely just incredible um, they also feature a button fly as you can see there but um the fabric is crazy combining what five different types of materials together and it just just a really um, interesting pant that will go well with um, anything that you put it with. Uh, moving on, we have the Jumbo Pastoral Braces Pants. So these are tagged size one and from the Fall Winter 2020 collection. Uh, if you guys are familiar with these, you'll know that they fit extremely, extremely oversized. So um, this being a size one, they had a like 35 or 36 inch waist. Um, but I went ahead and just uh, had the waist taken in and actually had them fold over the fabric and it made a really cool pleat uh, on the front there and I think it actually adds to the pants in general. So the Jumbo Pastoral Braces pants have a uh, high rise and a kind of like a slim straight cut through the leg. Along with that they have a cuffed hem at the bottom here and then a pleat going down the middle. It's got a nice zipper fly and then it's finished off with this vegetable ivory nut button and then we have two button pockets on the back as well and just a really nice black pair of dress pants uh, i've been looking i was looking for a uh, pair of black pants to kind of look formal but i could dress it down as well so this is pretty much the perfect answer for that and uh the fabric that they use is a wool linen blend and it actually feels very cool to the touch it has really nice unevenness and it's kind of pilling everywhere and i believe they achieve this through a one wash process and it kind of feels like a vintage pair of dress pants that you would find in a thrift store and i just think that they're super wearable super comfortable and a perfect addition to my wardrobe. Okay, so finishing it off, we have the famed Visvim Eager Sanction Pants. So these are pretty much um, their reproduction of military cargo pants. Uh, these are from the Spring Summer 2019 collection and are tagged size one. And a size one fits close to a 32 inch waist. And these have incredible details we have vegetable ivory nut buttons throughout, a zipper fly, 
and then a bunch of fold over snap pockets. So we have snap pockets on the front here and then on the sides as well. And then on the back pockets as well. And as you can see, it also has waist adjusters and then you can actually uh, accommodate a suspender here if you'd like. And then they actually have these cool um, hanger things. Uh, a lot of these details, I wouldn't even know what to do with, but I'm pretty sure that they have a purpose in the military aspect. Um, and then they also have these really cool hooks on the bottom here that you can uh, put straps through. So the straps are actually inside the cargo pockets on the side there. And then they also have adjustments on the hem so you can adjust the silhouette of the leg. But yeah, really awesome military pants that have crazy details and a really nice uh, cotton linen blend fabric. Um, very cool to the touch and comfortable. Um, it also has darting on the knees there to kind of allow for extra room, you know, to like bend down. Um, but yeah, just really awesome details through these pants and I really like them. So that's it for bottoms. So I guess we'll move to footwear and then finish off with outerwear. Okay, starting off with footwear. Uh, first up, we have the uh, Skagway Low Doji in kind of like an ivory colorway. Uh, I believe these are from the Spring Summer 2019 collection. Uh, the Skagways obviously have Converse Chuck 70 style inspirations. So the uppers are made with this really cool Sashiko style uh, Luxic Kendoji fabric. Uh, they actually, I actually have a jacket that uses the same material that I'll show later on, but it's a really cool uh, textured kind of like woven cotton fabric. Uh, really nice rubber cup sole, uh, leather toe cap, leather laces with uh, metal lace tips. And we also have this really nice Kion leather tongue tag with Visvin branding. And uh, we have a cool hand stitched back detail with a leather heel chimney, Visvin's custom uh, rubber outsole. Uh, these also feature a uh, leather lining, leather insole, cork footbed, and uh, it's just pretty much everything that you would want in a nice sneaker. Uh, and the colorway itself, I wear these a ton. As you can see, the bottoms are kind of like wearing out on me. Uh, and just, just because of the colorway itself, it goes with pretty much any of my pants, any of my outfits. Uh, so these are size eight and a half. I do recommend to size down one half size with Skagways, uh, especially um, in particular. Uh, so I am a true to size nine and I take an eight and a half in these. Uh, moving on, we pretty much have the same exact shoe. This is just in a Italian calfskin upper with a nice leopard print. Um, but yeah, it has pretty much the same details, the um, hand stitched back uh, heel detail on um, these ones are from spring summer 2017 and yeah not gonna go too much in depth on these since it's pretty much the same uh, sneaker uh, moving on we have one of my favorite favorite sneakers that I have in my wardrobe these are the fall winter 09 uh, Japur high hickory sneakers um, so obviously these have a converse um, inspired silhouette as well and they feature a really nice uh, hickory fabric on the uppers. And um, again, this also has a leather toe cap, a leather heel chimney, really cool Vism branding on the, on the heel there. Um, kind of a leather patch right there on the side. Uh, same outsole as we saw previously. And uh, and here is the tongue tab for it. These also have the leather lining and insole as we saw in the previous sneakers. Uh, just a really wearable sneaker and just a cool striped effect throughout. And uh, it's not too much to wear. It throws off an outfit. It's um, just a really cool detail to see. Uh, moving on, I just did a video on these. So you guys should be pretty familiar with these, but these are the um, Vism Skagway G Patton. Uh, lows in a black canvas material uh, 
just quick details on these are really cool uh, stacked uh, midsole with nice uh, Vism branding right here and then really cool piping all the way throughout the midsole and then obviously has like really cool distressing on the rubber. We have a leather toe cap, cotton canvas uh, uppers, leather detailing on the tongue and the heel chimney and then has the same Kion leather tongue tab that we saw previously. Uh, these also feature again leather lining, leather insole, cork footbed, um, just a really really nice sneaker uh, for um, all types of seasons. Moving on, we have pretty much the same exact sneaker, just in a higher version. Uh, this one uses um, cotton canvas as well, but they do a really nice hand painting uh, on the uppers. So I believe that the actual canvas itself is white, and then they paint it um, with this nice, um, kind of like off-white eggshell color, and the paint is not perfect, so it's kind of wearing away as I wear it. Uh, but yeah, it's got the same kind of like leather hits on the heel chimney, on the toe, and then also has the damage on the midsole as well. Um, these are just absolutely amazing sneakers, and I really love the chunky silhouette. Uh, it goes really well with kind of like the wider style of pants that I wear. Um, but yeah, it features pretty much the same, uh, as I keep saying, leather insole, leather lining. Uh, for these type of sneakers, as I said in my previous videos, stay true to size with them. Uh, previous Skagways, you have to size down one half size, but they have since fixed the sizing issues. Um, so you're safe to go true to size on these. Moving on, we have probably one of my most worn sneakers. These are the Foley Folk sneakers from spring, summer 2017. Um, so pretty much inspired after Stan Smith sneakers. Features this really uh, nice, thick and supple Italian calfskin leather on the uppers and then also has suede detailing on the heel and on the tongue. Um, and there's the leather tongue tab as well. And these are actually fully re replaceable. So the cup sole will actually, you can stitch off and replace um, the sole on it once it wears down. It also has Vism branding right here and then a really hard wearing, long lasting uh, rubber outsole as well and these also feature the cork footbed leather lining leather insole so I love those sneakers so much I had to get the quarter folk so this is pretty much a very similar silhouette just with a little bit different detailing uh, this uses a vegetable tan leather upper and has uh, similar details to the Foley folks but obviously these feature a V detail right here it has that same kind of cup sole detail as before and this one actually features visvim uh, hand stitching um, on the back here and here is the tag for it uh, for sizing on the Foley folks I would go half a size down on those but for the quarter folks you can actually stay true to size um, but yeah just a really really awesome sneaker and again goes with pretty much anything I really as you can see like sneakers that are tonal and that would go with a lot of colors and a lot of outfits so I get the most aware out of them uh, moving on we have one of my favorite sneakers from Visvim this is the UTE Mach High Folk so as you can see it kind of has a, uh, a trainer runner type uh, midsole and outsole and then it juxtaposes that trainer style with kind of like a folk moccasin upper uh, so these have a vegetable tanned uk cowhide suede upper with the hand stitching along the toe raw leather laces and these really cool tassel details all the way uh, throughout um, we have the kyan leather tongue tab and then if you can read here they are actually handmade as well and then has this really cool um, back uh, rolled woven fabric detail back here and then the striped detail as well uh, these are unlined and uh, I took a size 9 in these but I would actually recommend to go up half a size from your true size um, they are a bit narrow on the forefoot uh, but these also feature cork footbed and leather insole. 
and they also have a Vibram rubber outsole, though, so they'll be uh, super hard wearing. Um, but yeah, just a really awesome kind of like moccasin style sneaker. Moving on, we have the um, we have the FKT. Uh, I believe this is from the Fall Winter 2021 collection. And the FKT takes inspiration from classic vintage, you know, runner style silhouettes. Um, so it has this really nice purple leather V detail um, on top of this mesh overlay. And then it also has cowhide suede hits throughout. And then it also has the visvim stitching on the back heel there. And then a leather tongue leather tongue tab, leather lining, leather insole, cork footbed, um, really cool um, foam uh, midsole that's really comfortable. And then we have this cool plastic TPU heel support and then a Vibram rubber outsole with uh, kind of like V uh, detailing and just a really awesome kind of like a runner style trainer. Uh, moving on to boots. We have the famed Vizim Virgil boot. Uh, these actually use um, Belgium vegetable tanned leather throughout and the leather is actually tarnished. So you can see a really cool color variation of like a really dark brown and a light maroon kind of all the way throughout. I think that this is the leather that they use prior to mud dyeing. So this is like a pre-dyed pre-mud dyed Virgil pretty much and has really cool uh, brass lacing hardware, tunnel rope laces, a plastic uh, TPU heel support, um, a really nice Vibram waffle outsole and uh, these are size 9 and I recommend to stay true to size with Virgils um, and they also feature leather lining and a cork footbed that will mold to your feet over time. Uh, these are uh, finished off with a hand welted Goodyear welt so you can replace the outsole after the outsole wears down. Moving on, we have the Brigadier boot from the Fall Winter 2014 collection and this is finished in uh, cowhide suede. Uh, these are extremely, extremely popular in the Vism community. Um, rightfully so, it's such a wearable boot. Um, kind of has like a mid cut with brass lacing hardware. Uh, we have this cool hand painted tongue tab, uh, a good year welt, um, welted by hand. Really nice stitching details um, throughout the uppers and then a stacked leather midsole with this um, fabric insert on the heel there. Um, which is a really cool detail and then UK day night rubber uh, soles which are known to be very hard wearing and uh, last an extremely long time. Uh, these are also size 9 and I recommend to stay true to size with the Brigadier. Um, with the newer silhouettes you can actually go a half size down um, and they still fit pretty well. Moving on we have my uh, second favorite boot in my collection. These are the Spring Summer 2013 Seven Hole 73 Folk. Um, these are inspired uh, after military jungle boots that they wore in the Vietnam War. And uh, finished off this is with this really thick, hairy suede. Um, and it has a uh, canvas fabric uh, mixed throughout with this really cool leather tongue tab, uh, Swiss Riri zipper uh, side enclosure, tonal rope laces, plastic TPU heel support, uh, and then a Vibram lug sole. So these just are such a cool military style rugged boot and it just goes with um, a lot in my wardrobe and I really enjoy um, having them. Unfortunately in Florida, uh, I don't get to wear boots as much as I want to. Um, so these end up just sitting most of the time, which is a shame. Um, but I really hope to get more wear out of them in the um, upcoming uh, colder months. Uh, so finishing off footwear, we have my favorite shoe and favorite boot I've ever had in my collection. These are the uh, fall winter 2011 uh, Wabanaki blanket folk. Um, boots 
and uh, if you guys know, you know, these boots are absolutely incredible, very rare, very sought after, um, made famous by uh, John Mayer, of course, and uh, features this extremely soft kudu suede upper, and then this natural dyed blanket insert on the uh, shaft of the boot. And then we have these uh, kind of like pull tabs with V stitching right here. We have the season unique tongue tab. And then it has kind of like an engineer boot uh, silhouette with uh, plastic TPU hero support and then Vibram wedge sole. Um, these are just absolutely amazing boots. And these also feature the um, hand welted Goodyear welt. Um, pretty much all those in boots have that feature. Um, but yeah, I absolutely love these shoes and I really wish I lived in a climate where I could wear them every single day um, because I would definitely wear the shit out of them. And, um, you know, hopefully in the upcoming years, I can move to a, um, a place where these will get the rightful wear that they deserve. Um, so yeah, that is it for my footwear. So let's finish it off with outerwear. Okay, so finishing off the collection with outerwear. Uh, starting it off, we have the uh, Visvim Lamo shirt. So um, for those of you who aren't familiar with this type of shirt, this is Hiroki's take on a uh, modern Japanese kimono. So he wanted to kind of make the uh, Japanese kimono mainstream and put a modern um, twist on the traditional Japanese garment. Um, so this is his his uh, answer to that. So as you can see, this pretty much is like a button-up shirt just with a kimono collar and then a front tie closure. Uh, this in particular one is from the Fall Winter 2013 collection and it's a size 4. Um, it being size 4, it does fit a little bit slim. So this would fit more like a true size large, uh, but typically these sh um, these have a drop shoulder design, a kind of adjustable cuff uh, button that you would see on a button up shirt. And the buttons that they use is actually really nice damaged aluminum. Uh, this fabric is actually a Italian check print uh, cotton. And it's a, a, a really nice, mix of purple brown and black and yeah it's just a really cool um, overlayer shirt that pretty much goes with anything and you can just throw it on super quick and it just adds that little pop to your outfit so this is another lamo shirt this is called the lamo shirt flux patchwork and as you can see it does a, a patchwork design of, of um, a bunch of different fabrics so we have a linen cotton, um, cotton linen blend, chambray, and it just mixes all those type of materials together in a patchwork design. Uh, this one is a size three and uh, fits like in between a medium and large. And it's from the fall winter 2014 collection. And just an awesome overshirt and the patchwork detailing adds a really unique custom handmade feel to the uh, to the garment and uh, I really really enjoy it. Moving on we have once again another Lamo you can tell I really like the silhouette. Uh, this one is actually their rayon linen blend material and this is actually natur natural indigo dyed as well. Uh, this one is a size 3 and from the fall winter 2012 collection. Um, this is actually a really nice heavyweight rayon linen material and the color variation through the natural indigo dye is very impressive and uh, very cool to look at. Um, I can't wait to see this thing fade uh, throughout the years when I wear it. And yeah, it's just a really cool natural blue overshirt. Finishing off the Lambos, we have probably the rarest and best Lambo you can find. And this is their Garibou Spun Cotton Lambo and it's actually mud dyed as well. The Garibou spun cotton material, it actually is probably one of the oldest ways of spinning cotton 
and um, it's very painstaking and there's only a couple places in the world that actually make this type of material and it's actually this super thick and warm uh, cotton that has incredible texture and slub um, everywhere uh, throughout the actual fabric. Uh, this is actually an ICT piece so it actually has the Kofu tag at the neck. Uh, this one is a size 3 as well and from the uh, fall winter 2017 collection and uh, the mud dye on it is really incredible kind of this dark brown colorway and uh, I can't get enough of this fabric um, it's really something you have to feel in real life to really understand um, you know the significance of it um, and then the buttons on this instead of the hand painted aluminum on the regular on the regular Lamos, uh, they, this one uses a custom buffalo horn buttons instead. But uh, yeah, this Lamo is absolutely amazing. Um, fairly heavyweight, so I don't get to wear it as much as I want to, um, but it is an amazing, amazing uh, shirt jacket. So kind of a similar piece. Uh, this is the um, Visvim Sanjuro G kimono. Um, so pretty much a similar look to the Lamo, but this has more of a traditional Japanese uh, silhouette. So if you guys can imagine just a regular Japanese kimono, um, this is uh, pretty much that, but it has uh, three-fourth cut sleeves and features this really nice Luxic Kendoji fabric. So this is the same fabric that we saw in the Skagways earlier. Um, and then on the bottom here, it's the same type of fabric, but the gauge is much, much lower and then has these diamond damage uh, details on the bottom. Uh, this is a fairly uh, mid-weight piece and it's actually uh, natural indigo dyed, as you can see. So these two pretty much have the same dyeing process with them. And, uh, you know, it left it with this incredible blue, deep, rich indigo um, throughout the shell of the jacket. Um, and this is just, just an amazing jacket. I'm pretty sure they were limited, limited to like 100 made ever. Um, so yeah, just I feel really blessed to own a piece like this. And it's just an amazing jacket from this one. Uh, moving on, uh, this section is gonna be my second favorite silhouette jacket that Visum makes. It's their 101 jacket. And the 101 takes inspiration from the Levi's Type 2 silhouette. Uh, so the first one we have here is the 101 jacket in a kind of like a damaged gray uh, material. So this uses their social sculpture uh, denim, uh, which is their custom denim milled on salvage looms. And uh, they do a custom damage process on it and give the, uh, the jackets this really unique fading. Um, so we have two front chest pockets, Visvim branded button front closure. Um, and then as you can see, it's a super simple jacket, but they do the fading and damage processing very nicely. And then it has this, uh, you know, black dyed buckskin suede back patch and then adjustable waist here and then hidden uh, side zipper pockets as well. But just a super simple denim jacket and you can wear it with pretty much anything. Uh, this one is a size three and fits more like a medium. And this is from the fall winter 2014 collection. But yeah, a really awesome jacket. So moving on, we have pretty much the same silhouette, but this uses the uh, Visvim special dry denim. So as we saw in the dry denim, uh, uh, jeans uh, previously this is kind of like the jacket version so it's got the same details as the previous jacket but instead it has it uses their special dry processed uh, cotton and they actually do really nice hand distressing and kind of like input mud damage paint splatter everywhere throughout and then also has the hand painted uh, buttons everywhere and here is the back and then also features the 
ICT style and stitching on the buckskin suede patch. Um, as I said before, the dry denim pieces um, don't feature any zippers. So on the previous jacket, we saw that these side pockets were um, zippered, but on the dry, um, we see that the zippers were removed. So once again, there is some sort of problem with inputting zippers into a dry denim piece. Uh, but nonetheless, just a very, very awesome, um, kind of like vintage looking uh, denim jacket. Uh, this one is a size four, it fits more like a true size large, and it's from the Fall Winter 2019 collection. Uh, moving on, we have the 101 Jumbo. So as the name suggests, this um, is pretty much has the same details as the regular 101, but has a jumbo uh, silhouette. So it's kind of wider in the body and wider in the sleeves. And uh, this particular one is made out of this really nice brown corduroy fabric. Uh, this one is a size three and from the spring summer 2018 collection, um, but it does feature pretty much the same details as before. We have the um, side waist adjusters, uh, hidden zippered pocket on the side there. Um, but really the silhouette on this is much uh, wider and more boxy and uh, slightly more cropped as well. Um, but yeah, it's a really, really nice silhouette. So this is once again, another um, 101 Jumbo, but this is an ICT version. Uh, this one uses a custom 13 ounce uh, Luxic cotton blend denim fabric. And uh, this was one washed and also natural indigo dyed. So you can see it has this really, really deep, rich uh, blue character and color through it. And with the one wash, you can see that it has really nice fading and streaks um, in the color. And then on the seams, you see the color loss, um, um, which is like really, really nice. The ICT, this ICT version has um, some nice hand embroidered stitching on the chest. And then of course the Kofu patch on the neck. Uh, this one actually is a size four and fits more true to size to um, an extra large. And uh, yeah, just an amazing jacket, cool um, fabric with the Luxic blend cotton. And then with the obviously natural indigo dye, um, it's just an amazing way to dye uh, a, a material and to see the, the color that you get from that sort of dye is just incredible. Um, and then it also obviously has the ICT stitching on the back uh, buckskin suede patch. Finishing off the 101s, we have the 101 down jacket. So um, as the name suggests, this is filled with uh, Polish white goose down filling. And it uses a really nice eight ounce salvage denim shell. And then they actually do a one wash process. Uh, this one in particular has snap buttons instead of regular buttons. Um, so all of the buttons that you see are Visma branded and they're actually snap. And um, they're made out of this really nice damaged copper. And it has really cool details like a suede red tab near the hem. And um, if we open it up, we can see the really cool lining depicting a uh, Native American battle and it is um, slightly a pale blue from the one wash processing. And then we can also see kind of like selvage piping on the inside um, there of the jacket. This one is a size four, and I would say it fits like a true to size extra large. And it's from the fall winter 2018 collection. Um, but yeah, just a super nice uh, kind of like down jacket with a type two silhouette. And then it also features uh, this Kion leather back patch with VSVM uh, drip, paint drip uh, branding. And so each dot you see is an individual hand paint drip using lacquer paint, um, which is a really cool process. And I'm assuming it takes an extreme amount of time to make a patch like that. Um, but yeah, just a really, really cool uh, denim jacket. Uh, moving on, we have Another favorite silhouette of mine. Uh, this is the Visma Kilgore jacket. So the Kilgore takes inspiration 
from classic M65 military jackets. So we have kind of like four military style front pockets and they're actually button um, enclosed. And then we have a hidden front button placket and open collar design, uh, reinforced uh, elbows, as you can see. Uh, this one is from the Spring Summer 2018 collection, and this is a size three. Uh, I believe they changed the sizing in uh, 2018, so this one is kind of like the oversized silhouette. Um, prior to 2018, the Kilgores were more trim fitting, and I actually have another one after this to show, and it's uh, uh, a earlier season piece. Um, but yeah, it has really cool adjustable cuffs with vegetable ivory nut buttons and uh, you can also adjust the waist as well and you can see it has really nice fading already um, i've wa worn and washed this plenty of times and the black color is starting to fade to kind of like a dark brown or like a gray um, but just a really wearable and versatile jacket so as I said previously, this is the earlier season Kilgores. Uh, this one in particular is the Kilgore Kapala jacket. Uh, super, super famous and rare to find nowadays. A lot of the Vism community, uh, this is one of their grail jackets. And uh, so this one's made out of an indigo dyed corduroy fabric. Um, has same details as the previous one. We got four military style front pockets. Uh, but this one obviously features a really cool piece um, graphic on the chest and then a weird smiley face on the arm there. Just a really interesting, different military style jacket with really cool sun fading and a damage processing throughout. Um, and you can also adjust the waist like the previous one. Uh, this one is a size two and uh, it fits pretty slim on me. You know, it's kind of like a tight medium, but uh, you know, the price was too good to pass up and I can make it work uh, for now. And I'm absolutely in love with this. And uh, yeah, it also has the adjustable cuffs uh, as we saw in the previous jacket as well. Uh, this one is from the Fall Winter 2013 collection. And it's just an incredible, incredible jacket. And uh, I can't wait to, you know, wear this in and let the corduroy really uh, soften up with wear. Moving on, we have Visvim's Hayward Short Jacket. Uh, this one is a size two and from the Spring Summer 2020 collection. Uh, it being size two, it fits true to size to a medium and has this really nice fold over button enclosed military style uh, chest pockets a Riri front zipper and it also has kind of like a elastic waist and then two side hidden pockets as well uh, just a really cool military style jacket uh, the fabric on this actually is the same tanguise cotton that we saw in the high water drill mill pants so it's extremely comfortable and stretchy and feels like a sweatpant but as a jacket and I'm just absolutely in love the color the uh, garment dyeing the fading everything about this jacket is perfect for me moving on we have Visvim's Roadster uh, swing top jacket so the Roadster swing top um, is known for having a pretty wide body and then cropped in the waist this one also features the elasticated back waist as we saw in the previous jacket uh, this one has really cool kind of like billowed out sleeves and it kind of looks like a balloon on your arms uh, we have darting along the bottom side of the sleeve and then really nice vegetable ivory nut buttons um, we have two side pockets and then a nice V stitch detail on um, this is the same detail that was on the Irving shirt in the beginning of the video and then a Visvim branded Riri zipper uh, gold plated uh, bringing it down we see it has an incredible rayon lining this is extremely comfortable and breathable and uh, the rayon is almost cold to the touch so it's really cool 
a jacket for Florida because I, I don't overheat in it. And then it also features this cool check print detailing on the neck as well. And yeah, just a really versatile jacket, especially with the color, you know, it's just gray, it goes with everything. The fit is fantastic. Um, I recommend if you guys are interested in this jacket, pick one up, um, you won't be disappointed. Uh, moving on, we have a newer piece in my collection. This is the Baker coverall in a camo. So this one is tagged a size three and it's from the uh, fall winter 2021 collection. Uh, it's made out of this really nice herringbone wool linen fabric and then finished off in this incredible camo print. Uh, and then this is pressed finished and damage processed as well. So it left it with a very crispy um, texture and then nice fading throughout. Uh, we also have this in quality we trust hand stencil on one of the pockets. Um, and it also has two waist pockets as well. The buttons themselves are um, original to Visbim and they're actually hand engraved. Um, I don't know if you guys can see that, but it actually says VSVM all the way around it. Um, it's just a really cool detail. Um, the buttons themselves are reminiscent of old military uh, style uh, buttons that you would find on surplus garments uh, back in the, like the 1970s or 80s. So Visbim, you know, took inspiration from that, but then added their own unique uh, branding touch to it. Uh, we have adjustable cuffs on this as well, which is really nice. Uh, this being a size three, it does fit oversized. Uh, as these newer seasons come up, they are changing their silhouette to more oversized fit, which is nice to see. So this has a drop shoulder design um, and fits more like a extra large, I would say. But extremely light, flowy fabric and uh, really, really nice for, you know, all seasons, I would say. Uh, but yeah, just a really cool camo jacket and kind of spices up any sort of outfit with the um, really nice uh, print. This is another new um, piece that I acquired. This is the Visnum Pilar uh, Fisherman Vest. Uh, this one is a size 3 and from the Fall Winter 2019 collection. Uh, obviously, this takes inspiration from classic fisherman vests from the 1960s. So it features a bunch of snap button utility pockets along with uh, zipper pockets as well, which uses uh, Swiss Riri zippers, um, a Swiss Riri zipper from uh, Closure as well. And then we have sheepskin chest details on either side. And then these um, interesting kind of like utility details. I'm not really sure what they're used for, but I just like the look of it. Um, in addition to that, it also has a huge back pocket with a zipper. And right now I actually have this attachment inside and this attachment actually zips to the side right here if you guys want. Um, it features this really nice striped fabric throughout and then peerless uh, button in the middle there. And a really cool detail about this is the lining. Um, it actually uses a red and white striped rayon lining on the inside. Um, just a really cool hit. Um, the details on this on this vest is, are absolutely incredible. Um, and I think that this is a really nice layering piece, piece that can go with a lot of, of, of outfits. Um, so it's gonna be a nice a versatile addition to the wardrobe. Moving on, we have one of my favorite purchases in I would say the last couple months. This is the uh, Willard Jacket Crash. Uh, this one in particular is a size two and from the fall winter 2020 collection. Uh, size two fits true to size medium, but has an oversized fit. So it has a drop shoulder design. Um, as you can see, it has an open collar, uh, button front pocket um, and just incredible details uh, from the name you can suggest uh, crash detailing means that they do a bunch of distressing and repairing all the way throughout the fabric 
and uh, these buttons that they use is actually the same buttons we saw on the Baker coverall so they have the SVM all the way throughout it um, as you can see it has this really nice garment dyed navy uh, cotton herringbone fabric and uh, the distressing is very um, unique very natural looking which is nice uh, and then we also have a blowout on the elbow as well and then here is the back distressing just oh my gosh i can't get enough of this jacket um once i got it i sold like three jackets because i don't think i i need anything other than this this is kind of like the perfect blue jacket for me and uh, i'm really excited to add this to the collection and i'm really pumped about it so yeah that is the willard jacket crash Ending it off, we have probably my most prized possession. This is the ICT Thorson jacket. Um, this one is a size three and from the uh, Fall Winter 2019 collection. Uh, this was actually a Black Friday exclusive limited to 30 pieces worldwide. Uh, features a nylon shell, a really cool MA1 bomber style um, details it has really cool cotton herringbone lined pockets uh, damaged silver snap buttons um, really nice darting on the back shoulder here and then a nice wool ribbing on the collar as well as the hem and the sleeves as well uh, this being an ICT piece it obviously has the Kofu neck patch um, and then this does use a Swiss Riri zipper as well. Uh, really nice, comfortable rayon lining. And then the star of the show is the, uh, the elbows. So this is similar to like their albacore style shirts where they do a fabric insert. Uh, this one in particular uh, is a fabric called Sevian Ori. And this is an extremely, uh, you know, this fabric takes weeks to complete it's absolutely incredible that the way the the way that they make it uh, they actually do have a dissertation on the website and i su suggest you guys go check it out it's really interesting uh, but along with that they put a peerless kind of detail over top this seven ori um, elbow insert and the other side is just regular um, but this is just an incredible incredible jacket Really cool details in the store behind how they made it. Uh, just makes it that much better. In addition to that, the 30 pieces worldwide makes me never want to sell it because it's extremely, extremely rare. And uh, you know, I just love this jacket so much. And that is it for uh, the outerwear. Okay, and that's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, I believe it was around 90 pieces in total. And I just wanna do a disclaimer that um, obviously, having 90 pieces of this in clothing is definitely over over consumption and this is probably not what Hiroki imagined when he made his brand uh people to do uh he you know really promotes buying one thing and wearing it to the ground and then getting another um I realize that and um if you guys don't have as much as me it doesn't mean that my collection is any better than yours and uh, don't feel like you have to have this many things in your closet to feel like you have a complete wardrobe. And yeah, this is not for me to show off, but just to show the pieces and to show the love for the brand. And uh, yeah, I don't wanna come off as show offy or douchey in any way, um, but I just wanna show off this brand that I love and this hobby that I've been doing for the past two years and hopefully one of you guys can appreciate the craftsmanship and the storytelling in the clothing and try it out yourself. And maybe you'll find the love that I did for this clothing brand around two years ago. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys for watching. And if you guys made it to the end of the video, um, I really appreciate uh, you staying. I think that this video is probably gonna be past an hour. Uh, and uh, personally, I like long YouTube videos. And if you actually made it to the end of the video, uh, please comment down below that you did. And before I end the video, I wanna reiterate, um, if you guys like 
this channel and these videos that I do, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. It really helps me out. Um, I'm really close to 800 subscribers, um, which is really exciting. Uh, I never would have imagined that I had over, you know, 10 people subscribing to my YouTube channel. Um, so I really appreciate the continued support. Uh, follow me on Instagram and Grail. The links will be in the description below. And then put post notifications on this YouTube and my Instagram so you don't miss any of the YouTube content or the um, visit listings that I do in the future. And uh, I think that's about it. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed my updated collection video and have a good one.